Medieval Total War, a retrospective review. Today, we're going to be taking a deeper look at the Total War game that I would say I have the most nostalgia for, Medieval 1 Total War. Yes, you heard that right, Medieval 1, not 2. I took a lot of flack for putting the original Medieval, that is, the vanilla game, as an S-tier game when I did my Vanilla Total War Games tier list, while I put games like Rome and Medieval 2 slightly lower on that list. My S-tier games in that tier list were Shogun 2, Fall of the Samurai, and Medieval 1, for context. Since I hadn't fired up the original Medieval in quite a while, I figured that now was as good a time as any to try it out again, and see if it held up as well as I'd imagined. Short answer, this game is epic through and through and deserves to be remembered as such. For this video, I'm just going to go over its aspects in general, and I am planning on doing a deeper dive into each of its strengths in a new video series later on, so if I don't cover everything here, don't worry too much about it. In any case, let's get into it. The Presentation The presentation of Medieval Total War is, in my opinion, the, mo the most atmospheric and table setting in the franchise, and I really think they absolutely nailed it in terms of going for that dark, medieval, hopeless atmosphere. You start up the game and you're greeted with the epic main menu theme, Cathedral of Doom, which I find to be the best main menu theme in the whole Total War franchise, and it totally lives up to its haunting name. This isn't to say that I don't love other Total War main menu themes. Medieval 2s, Shogun 2s, Napoleons, Rome's are all quite nice and atmospheric as well. I just find that the original Medieval hits the mark perfectly, especially in conjunction with the most drab-looking main menu in the series. It isn't exactly drab, it's just somewhat sad and gritty, and of course that's totally intentional. In any case, I really like Cathedral of Doom. Now, perhaps the aspect of Medieval that has aged the most is the campaign map, in terms of its presentation. It is a very flat 2D map with uh, just shades of brown and characters and armies that resemble pieces in a board game. Though I'm not the biggest board game aficionado, I still like the aesthetic here. I also really like the 2D art in the game, including the buttons, the in-game event art, building and unit cards, and especially the character portraits. I think one area where Medieval 2 really fell flat compared to the games that came before it, Roman Medieval 2 1, was in its very bland character portraits. Just like Rome's classic portraits, these ones have a sense of character and personality, and for some reason just capture the atmosphere of the games very well. One other reason why I really enjoy the campaign map and its 2D art is the campaign map soundtrack. Every track is very atmospheric and emphasizes that dark feeling of hopeless struggle that the original Medieval likes to evoke. Of course, the battle tracks for the original Medieval Total War are also quite epic, both the uh, European and the Near Eastern battle tracks, and I think they did an excellent job with that. And actually, the new tracks that were made for the Viking uh, Invasion expansion are also quite nice as well, and I think that the Medieval 1 soundtrack, uh, again done by Jeff Van Dyke, who is the famous composer of the soundtracks for Rome 1, Medieval 2, and Shogun 2 as well, and the original Shogun and original Medieval, I think his most, I think his greatest works are Medieval 1 and uh, Shogun 2. He really, really nailed it here. The Campaign. Now, a lot of people find that Medieval Total War's gameplay has become a bit antiquated. I mean, it is based on an enhanced version of the original Shogun Total War engine. Perhaps the most jarring aspect of the original Medieval for modern players is the fact that the campaign map is essentially a flat 2D map with characters and armies that look essentially like game board pieces. You could say that in this regard, the campaign gameplay is definitely more abstract and a little gamey than it is in later titles like Rome or Shogun 2. However, this somewhat dated appearance hides some nice and deep gameplay elements that were ahead of their time and were even not present in later Total Wars. I also have to say that I appreciate the province divisions of the original Medieval more than those in Medieval 2. 
It seems to me that in general, Medieval II had more anachronisms and odd design and historical choices in regards to the provinces and cities chosen to be represented on the map. One of my favorite aspects of the original Medieval is in is its era campaigns. It is not content to have just one standard grand campaign. There are three, with the early, high, and late eras. The inclusion of these era campaigns definitely adds a lot of replayability and includes a lot more interesting start scenarios for various factions, such as the first Total War campaign I ever played, the High Era Byzantine campaign where you start out sans Constantinople. I remember that the lack of era campaigns in Medieval 2 was a major disappointment for me personally when Medieval first came out. Medieval Total War has your rather standard assortment of factions, including the Byzantines, the English, the French, the Egyptians, etc. It does include some rather ahistorical amalgam factions, including the Italians, but this is somewhat kept to a minimum here. We'll talk a bit more about some of the more egregious decisions in regard to history in another video. One faction I'm very happy to see included here was not, that was not present in Medieval 2 is uh, Aragon. It is nice to see them here, and their campaigns are quite fun and tough with challenging start positions. Their uh, late era campaign where they also uh, own Sicily, as well as the province of Aragon, is quite a cool start position, I have to say. In terms of the Crusades, I always appreciated how the era campaigns handled the creation of the Crusader states. Medieval, like Rome and Medieval II, had major factions and the ubiquitous rebels. So how do you represent the Crusader states here? Well, similar to the approach in the medieval mod for Rome Total War, Chivalry Total War, the original medieval gives the Crusader state provinces to France to control, and I find this to be a pretty decent idea. Of course, a Chivalry Total War gives each Crusader state to a different European faction that was involved in the Crusades, which I find to be a bit of a better solution, but the original medieval handles it fairly well. One of my favorite aspects of the original Medieval is the characters. Like in Rome and Medieval 2, characters have a bunch of traits and abilities that are semi-random, though of course, like in the later games, they can be affected by their location and what you do with them. I also really appreciate how you can essentially purchase and influence loyalty in this game by giving certain characters titles. I find that giving out titles, while possible in Rome and Medieval 2 through certain ancillaries and scripts, is far better and more immersive in the original Medieval, and the fact that it improves that character's loyalty to your faction is great. The best thing about Medieval in regards to characters is that every single unit you train has its own commander. This is a genius idea, and I am so flabbergasted that this did not carry over to any of the later games. Of course, Rome and Medieval 2 had captains of uh, uh, armies without generals that could be promoted if they performed well in battle, but simply having developed characters as commanders for every unit is a much better system and is more immersive than having faceless and personalityless captains. The campaign map while being more simple and 2D, is also surprisingly detailed in a lot of aspects. Quite a few provinces have unique descriptions and inform you that you can recruit a particular, stronger unit from that province. For example, in Lesser Armenia, you can recruit stronger Rulam cavalry. These small details and additions are things that are missing in later titles like Rome and Medieval 2 Vanilla, uh, which was surprising to me when those games first released. It was shocking that they wouldn't include such basic but so but such immersive features at the same time. The battles. Now, for me, the area where the original medieval has clearly aged oh somewhat poorly is in the battles department. The battles in medieval one are not bad per se. Formations are quite important here. Morale is critical, a lot of the main battle aspects of Total War, and even more, are present here. It's just that it's so clunky to control, especially compared to newer titles. One of the things I like most about Rome Total War Remastered is the fact that the controls have been updated and revamped, but even the original Rome Total War's controls are far less clunky and just much more of a pleasure than the original Medieval's. 
regular field battles feel pretty good, and it feels good to utilize standard hammer and anvil tactics with your line infantry and cavalry. The clunky controls do make sieges and more complicated battles somewhat of a nightmare, however. I do have to say that sieges don't feel so bad here. I remember really disliking them when I was younger, but actually revisiting them, they aren't so bad. I generally don't like Total War Siege battles very much, especially when they glitch out in the original Rome, Medieval 2, and Empire, but I have to say that compared to those games, the siege battles in the original Medieval are not that bad and they're, they're not that glitchy, really. Compared to Medieval 2, let's be clear. I am a big fan of Medieval 2. I think it's an excellent Total War game, and no doubt it has the most extensive and legendary mod scene. However, in terms of the vanilla game itself, from the start I felt like CA dropped the ball in a lot of aspects when compared to its predecessor, the original Medieval. The presentation of Medieval 2 is quite different compared to the original, and its changes have come at the expense of the original's dark gritty atmosphere in a lot of aspects, especially in regards to the soundtrack and 2D art. While Medieval 1 is not quite as moddable as Medieval 2, and fewer mods were made for it, there are a few very nice mods for the original, including Medieval XL, which add a ton of factions, units, and depth to the campaign, even though the map in Medieval 1 is not moddable, which is highly unfortunate. Medieval Remastered? If the original Rome Total War was in need of a remaster, then the original Medieval is a prime candidate. It is incredibly unstable on modern systems, and I have to say it was quite a pain to get any footage recorded for this video, but I was able to do it eventually thanks to the Xbox Game Bar now included by default in Windows 10. Its controls, especially in battle, are so dated and clunky compared to modern Total War that Though that is probably the one aspect, in addition to the graphics, that needs the most TLC. I am absolutely in favor of an HD remaster of the original Medieval Total War. Prior to being remastered, the original Rome was spruced up a bit and ported to mobile platforms, Android and iOS. I think that the Creative Assembly can definitely use a mobile port and enhancement of the original Medieval in order to test the waters and see what the demand is for a stable, HD, somewhat modernized remaster for PC. Conclusion Even though Medieval 2 is perhaps the most universally loved Total War game by longtime fans of the series, I will always have a soft spot for the original Medieval due to its deep and engaging campaign gameplay, as well as its haunts, haunting atmosphere, art, and soundtrack. Medieval 1 has a special place in Total War history for me, as I feel like this game, Shogun 2, Napoleon, and the original Rome, in most aspects, are the games in the series that really nailed the immersion factor, which is really critical for a series like Total War. The campaign and battle gameplay is also good, with many aspects of the former that truly outshine later installments of the series in many respects. I truly feel like this game really deserves a remaster that improves the graphics and controls, perhaps in a double pack with the original Shogun. If this happens, I will be eternally grateful, as this game is a classic of epic proportions that is just a major pain to play on modern systems. Thanks for watching! If you enjoy videos about the historical Total Wars and their mods, consider liking this video and subscribing. I would really appreciate it. See you in the next one.